Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Prophetess Patrice T. Smith, of course. This is another awesome, awesome edition of Moments with the Prophetess. Of course, we come to you every Wednesday, and most certainly it is our pleasure, it is our privilege to come to you to be able to teach you the Word of God, to be able to speak into your life, thus saith the Lord, to be able to cause your spirit, your soul, your mind, and your body to be transformed, to be changed, to be taken to another level in God. We are so excited again to come to you today. Oh my goodness. This is an opportunity most certainly that we are privileged to have and we give God thanks for granting us and affording us this opportunity to be able to come to you yet another time. Come on, share this. Create a watch party, create a watch party, create a watch party. Let everybody know that Prophetess Patrice T. Smith is live on Facebook, Moments with the Prophetess. I'm going to give you a few minutes just to get some people in. Go ahead and get some of your family in, get some of your friends in. Uh, get some of your contacts in. Come on, let them know that Moments with the Prophetess is on live today. Create a watch party. Create a watch party. This is going to be a powerful show. So create a watch party. Let everybody know that we are on the air Moments with the Prophetess. Oh my goodness. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good morning, good night, wherever you're watching us from all around the world, whatever time you're watching us in, we give God thanks for you, and uh, most certainly know that we are praying for you. What an awesome, awesome time to be alive. What an awesome, awesome opportunity to be able, most certainly, to speak the unadulterated, undiluted word of God that is certainly able to change our lives for the good. And so we give God thanks for what he will say today. Oh, this is going to be a powerful program. So like I said, go and share it. Go ahead and share it. Share it with everybody. Create a watch party. Let them know that Prophetess Patrice T. Smith is live moments with the prophetess. They don't want to miss this. I want to reveal today and I want to speak today on revealing, exposing, and overcoming the spirit of fear. <laughs> revealing exposing and overcoming the spirit of fear and of course this is part one we're going to start a lot of seretical teachings and we're going to be dealing in particular glory be to god with spiritual warfare for a time and so we're going to be dealing with uncovering revealing exposing most certainly various spirits and so we're starting out with the spirit of fear. Uh, we're going to deal with the spirit of Jezebel. We're going to deal most certainly with the spirits that operate from the marine kingdom. Uh, we're going to deal with the spirit or the python spirit. We're going to deal with the spirit of the Leviathan. Uh, we're going to deal with spirits of household witchcraft. We're going to get deep into warfare, into spiritual warfare. So all I can tell you is, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so over the summer, we're going to be dealing with spiritual warfare on moments with the prophetess. And so we're going to be uncovering various spirits. We're going to deal with the Herod spirit, the spirit of Herod, the spirit of Judas, my God, the Absalomic spirit, my God almighty. We're going to deal most certainly with that old wicked woman, that spirit, glory be to God, called Jezebel. And we're going to reveal that a lot of these spirits that we are dealing with are operating in the organized church. And I'm not talking about the remnant. I'm not talking about the body of Christ, the true body of Christ. These spirits are in operation, glory be to God, in churches that are steeped in religion in the religious order, the religious body, in the organized church, most certainly in the building. And so we want to be able, come on, get some people in, get some people in, get some people in. We want to be able to teach you so that you would recognize, recognize that you would be able to discern 
And listen, you can't discern unless you have a relationship with God. Uh, any discerning that comes outside of a relationship with God is witchcraft. It's called psychic. You're psychic. My God Almighty. You're operating in the realm of ESP. Glory be to Jesus. And so any type of sensory operation that's operating outside of the kingdom of God. In other words, if your life is not hid in Christ and you are operating in a gift, that gift is not motivated by God. Let me make that very clear. Let me say very clearly, if your life is not hid in Christ and if you are not a child of God, you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you are operating in a gift. You are not operating with the unction of God's Holy Spirit. You are operating under the flesh and you are being controlled by demonic spirits. My God, let that sink in. You know, a lot of people say, well, when I wasn't saved, I used to say this and I used to dream that and, you know, it would come to pass and I used to feel this and I used to sense that. Listen, when you're not saved, your spirit man is dormant. Your spirit man is not an operation when you are not saved. You are dead to the things of God. And so when you become saved, your spirit man is resurrected. Because your spirit man died, glory be to God, because of sin. So you were born dead in your spirit man because of Adam and Eve. There is nobody that was born with their spirits alive. You had to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And in surrendering your life to Jesus Christ, your spirit man was activated and the spirit of dormancy was removed from your spirit man and your spirit man was open to God. So if you're saying, well, prophetess, I wasn't saved, but I could have dreamed this and I could have said that and I could have seen this and I could have feel that and I could have sensed that God ain't had nothing to do with it. My God Almighty, you're operating from your human spirit. It was motivated by a demon spirit. There are psychics that can tell you a lot of truth. There are people operating in the realm of ESP that can tell you a lot of truth. There are many people, glory be to God, that are imitating, hallelujah, what happened to Saul, what happened to Paul. Glory be to God. And what do I mean? They're operating in the spirit of levitation. They're levitating, coming out of their bodies, out of body experiences. God ain't got nothing to do with that. It's demonic in nature. My God Almighty. And so I say over and over again, be not moved, glory be to Jesus, by gifts that are not being uh, controlled by fruit. I say it over and over again. Be not moved by gifts that are not being controlled by fruit. What do you mean, prophetess? What do I mean? Anybody that's prophesying to you, Glory be to Jesus. I'm telling you what you should do. My God, and they are living in sin. Don't you dare entertain that individual. Don't you dare entertain that spirit. My God Almighty. Oh, Jesus, I'm getting some trouble right here. I'm getting some trouble right here. Because you got plenty of witches prophesying. They prophesying. Operating with psychic powers. Operating deep in the marine kingdom. And they are in church calling themselves prophets and prophetesses. Calling themselves apostles and pastors. Evangelists and teachers. But they are really my God. They are really wolves in sheep clothing. And they are operating under a spirit of divination. And so therefore if I cannot see fruit in your life. I am not interested in nothing that you have to say. My God almighty. And this is the stance that the church must take. Glory be to Jesus. You can't prophesy to me, but you're shacking up with another woman's husband. You can't prophesy to me, but you leave your wife, glory be to God, to marry somebody else in the church. You can't prophesy to me, my God Almighty, and you're drinking and smoking and carousing. You can't prophesy to me, and, and you're not living holy. That same spirit that gives you the grace to prophesy has enough power to give you the grace to walk in holiness. Oh, I ain't gonna get in problems right here, but it's just all right. Glory be to Jesus. And so stop looking at gifts. Start looking at fruit. Once fruit is present, my God, gifts are the byproduct. You will automatically walk moving
operating in the gifts of the spirit, which is the power of the kingdom, which shows the kingdom and advertises. The gifts advertise the kingdom of God. But the fruit is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost. And so if you are operating in the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit will automatically flow from your life. It is a byproduct. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I just had to throw that in there. By the time as we're finished this summer, you will be well taught. Come on, get some people in. Get some people to watch this broadcast. <laughs> Let them know that Prophetess is on air with Moments with the Prophetess. Come on, join us. Join us. Join us. Get some people. Glory be to God to join in right now. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. This is the summer. I know it is because I can feel it already. My God, I'm already sweating and the air condition is on. <laughs> so y'all pray for providence. So today we're going to deal with exposing, revealing, and overcoming the spread of fear. And like I said, throughout the months of July and August and into September, glory be to God, we're going to be dealing with various spirits. So you don't want to miss Moments with the Prophetess every Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. Glory be to God every Wednesday evening. Glory be to Jesus. Because we are going to be uncovering some spirits that are hiding. Oh my God. But we're going to uncover them. We're going to reveal them. We're going to expose them. Amen. To God be all the glory. So if you want to hear about, hallelujah, the the, the spirit of a python, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Ahithophel, my God, the spirit of Lilith, which is the companion of Jezebel, my God, which is a spirit of perversion. If you want to hear about the spirit of anger, spirit of fear, Leviathan spirit, the spirit of the marine kingdom, the spirit of household wickedness, my God Almighty, the spirit, my God, hallelujah, Jesus, of 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 uh, uh, stagnation glory be to god stagnation my god almighty so many people are being stagnated not realizing that it is a spirit they're wondering why they are procrastinating going around the same circles over and over again doing the same thing over and over again making the same mistakes over and over again falling in the same pits over and over again my god almighty the spirit of stagnation, which is coupled with the spirit of procrastination, has you bound. My God. And so we're going to get deliverance. We're going to get delivered. Oh, hallelujah. I feel it already. We're going to get delivered over this summer. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Get some people to join. Get some people to join. Create a watch party. Create a watch party even now. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me mention before I go any further, and I'm so excited about this. And listen, there are many people that are calling. And many people, glory be to God, that are signing up. There are many people that most certainly are going to be a part, hallelujah, of the Patrice T. Smith Ministries International Walk of Champions. Patrice T. Smith Ministries International Walk of Champions. It is a mentorship course. It is a course in spiritual midwifery. It is time to give birth. And listen, like I've been saying, I am anointed to be your spiritual midwife. And so you want to join this course. Amen. There are many of you that call me and you say, Prophetess, can you interpret a dream? Or can you tell me about dreams? Uh, Prophetess, can you tell me about this prophetic word that... I'm feeling in my spirit, and you have so many questions. Listen, call our number. Glory be to God. Be a part of this class. Be a part of this upcoming mentorship program. We're going to be addressing all of those things, how to understand dreams. Most certainly, how to interpret, glory be to God, visions. How to understand and interpret symbols and numbers. Glory be to God. Most certainly, how to walk powerfully in the prophetic. Glory be to Jesus. Lord, I feel the anointing right there. 
God has anointed me as a major prophet. Glory be to Jesus. And so therefore, I am most certainly interested in imparting a piece of that anointing, glory be to God, into your lives. All of you, my sons and daughters, most certainly I'm expecting you. A lot of my sons and daughters have already signed up, and I'm expecting even more of you to sign up. I am just so overwhelmed by the response, glory be to God, the Walk of Champions. Glory be to God, a mentorship program, a course in spiritual midwifery. It is time to give birth. And so we're going to be dealing with various things. Glory be to God. My daughter, if you can go and get that course outlined for me. Glory be to God so that I could just talk about it a little bit later on in the show. And so this is going to be powerful. Listen, the most powerful investment you can ever make is an investment in yourself. I'm going to say that again. The most powerful investment that you can ever make is an investment in yourself. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so when you call and you say, Providence, could you interpret this dream? I'm going to say, did you sign up for the mentorship class? If you say no, well, you're not going to hear anything from Providence. Why? Because you ought to be able to invest in yourself. Amen. I am not going to cast my pearls to swines. And I say that very loosely. Glory be to God. What I'm saying to you is, most certainly, you must take advantage of this course. Take advantage of this class. Glory be to God. It's only for eight weeks. And of course, like I said, you're going to learn many things. You're going to understand purpose. You're going to understand process. You're going to understand, my God Almighty, how to walk in your vocation, how to walk in your calling. You'll be able to understand prophetic dreams and visions. You'll be able to, uh, be able to understand the, the power of spiritual numbers and symbols. So many of you call me and say, Prophetess, I had a dream about numbers, or could you tell me what this symbol means? Glory be to God, I want you to enroll in the class. We're going to be doing the class, and there are two opportunities. You can do the class in-house. We're going to have in-house classes, as well as for my international persons, registrants my international sons and daughters you can most certainly uh, register and we will be live via zoom so you do not want to miss these two opportunities <laughs> i have some international persons they say providence i just wish i could fly down to the bahamas literally this is what they say i just wish i could fly down to the bahamas just to sit in your presence just to see you just to hear your teaching and so that's just all right eventually we'll get around to that but most certainly for those who are in New Providence, in the Bahamas, you want to be a part of this. You want to come in the house. Glory be to Jesus. You have an opportunity to be here and to listen live and be able to ask your questions live, most certainly. And so I'm looking forward to an awesome eight weeks in the Patrice T. Smith mentorship program, The Walk of Champions, a midwifery, spiritual midwifery course. Glory be to God. It is time to give birth. So we, we're going to be dealing with topics such as uh, the necessity of purpose, the power of purpose. How do I know my purpose? Who am I called to? Because nobody is called to everybody. Nobody is called to everybody. That's why I always have a problem with people that are jealous. And again, jealousy, that's another spirit. I always have a problem with people that are jealous because whoever you are jealous of or whatever you are jealous of doesn't belong to you. Nor are you able to do it, nor walk in it, nor have it. I always wonder about that. How people because of jealousy end up into witchcraft. My God Almighty, because they see something that they want. Lord Jesus is a spirit of Absalom. And so what happens? You end up losing your life spiritually and sometimes physically like, like Absalom did. And so there's no reason for jealousy because whoever you are called to, there's nobody else that's called to those groupings of people. What you are called to do and the way you are called to do it, there's nobody else that can do it like you. There's nobody else that's been anointed or empowered or equipped to do it like you. So don't look at anybody else because you're not anointed to do what they're doing. Matter of fact, you try to do it, you're going to mess up. 
That's not your calling. That's not your space. That's not your place. That's not your lane. Glory be to Jesus. So not everybody or nobody is called to everybody. Each one of us has a niche. Each one of us has an area, a space, a purpose. Glory be to God. So you're going to learn that in this mentoring class. Who am I called to? And you got to understand that who you are called to is prepared for you. So whenever you arrive at that place that you're called to, that space that you're called to occupy, and those people that you're called to minister to, it will be very easy. You will know them and they will know you because there will be a call in the spirit that connects in the natural. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. So don't worry about people not liking you. Don't worry about your haters. Don't worry about who don't accept you. Don't worry about who looks at you funny. Listen, that's just all right. They're supposed to hate you. They're supposed to look at you funny. They're supposed to not accept you. Why? You aren't called to them. You're not called to them. The saddest thing is you trying to go into a space that you are not called to occupy. Oh, Lord Jesus. That could be detrimental. It could cause your death. So don't do it. Find out who you're called to. Glory be to God. And move towards that space, that place. Glory be to God. So who am I called to? You're going to find that out. How do I awaken my purpose? All of this is in the mentorship program. Walk of Champions. Eight weeks. Uh, overcoming the flesh. Lord Jesus. Walking in obedience. The power of submission. Listen, all of these are books within itself. And you're going to be taught. <laughs> You're going to be taught each one of these during the eight weeks training program. Becoming alive to Christ. Standing on his word. Victorious in warfare. My God. Manifesting the fruit of Holy Spirit. Walking in the gifts of Holy Spirit. Walking in the power of Holy Spirit. Understanding levels. Understanding dimensions. Understanding realms. You're going to be dealing with all of that. And then we're going to have uh, a practicum. We're going to have a theory and we're going to have a practicum, which means that you're going to be able to do some role playing. At the end of it all, you're going to be able uh, most certainly to, to participate in that which you are called to. We're going to create kind of a, 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 you know, a simulated, if I could use that term, kind of a simulated approach so that you can get a little idea of what it is you're called to do and to be able to work it out, walk it out uh, in the class setting. And so we're going to have the, the last part of it. We're going to be dealing, giving birth the theory, giving birth the practicum. And of course, the answer questions and answers will give one whole class to just questions and answers. Amen. Each one of those classes are two hours. So you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Years of experience is going to be able to be poured into you. My God Almighty, in eight weeks, we're going to condense it. <laughs> we're going to capsulize it, if I could use that term. And as much as possible, we're going to kind of fine tune it and just envelop it and present it to you, place it in your spirit. And so when you leave this program, Walk of Champions, listen. You are most certainly going to be the champion in manifestation that you are. <laughs> so call us today. Space is limited. Classes are filling up. Call us today. If you're in the uh, continental United States or anywhere else in the world for that matter, give us a call here in the Bahamas. That's area code 242-823-6498. Area code 242-823. 823-6498. If you're in the Bahamas, then just 823-6498. Of course, our office is closed, so you can give us a call tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Beginning at 10.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m., you can call our office hours. And you can also call if you need prayer, if you need counseling. You can call that same number. Most certainly, we have intercessors that are on staff. And they will pray for you. Amen. And so we're looking forward to hearing from as many of you as possible. So go ahead and share this. Go ahead and share this. Go ahead and create a watch party right now. I did a whole lot of talking so that we could get more people in. Go ahead and share it. 
Amen. It's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. Today, this is part one. Uncovering, revealing, uncovering, overcoming the spirit of fear. Like I just said, the entire summer, we're going to be dealing with spiritual warfare. So you want to be a part. <clears throat> you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't want to miss it. You want to be a part, most certainly, of our spiritual warfare time. Amen? <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for what you're about to say. God, I make myself available to you. Speak through me. Teach through me. I pray, Father, that your kingdom would come, your will would be done today in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. Be glorified, be magnified in everything that we say and that we do. Let your people be changed. Let them be transformed. Let them be delivered because of the information that they will receive today. Thank you for the entrance of your word. For the entrance of your word brings light and life. And so we give you praise right now. Bless every individual watching us. I pray, God, that you would magnify your word in their lives. And even now we rebuke the spirit of fear. We rebuke every hindering spirit. We rebuke every demonic spirit. We take authority over Satan and his entire kingdom even now. Satan the Lord rebukes you. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Open the spiritual eyes and spiritual ears of the listeners even now. Let their lives bring you only glory. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say, Amen and Amen. To God be all the glory for the great things that he has done. Let me say something to you. And it is, it is this. And I want you to never forget it. I want you to write it down and never forget it. Glory be to God. As long as the spirit of fear. I'm not talking about fear. Because at some point in time in our lives, each one of us experienced that powerful emotion called fear. But I'm talking about the spirit of fear. As long as the spirit of fear is in control of your life, you will never, ever walk in purpose. I'll say that again. As long as the spirit of fear, robo shakate, lamando bo, koriande de bosia, rebebe de de bo, sikanda da da basaya. I bind that spirit of witchcraft right now that's viewing through the lens of this camera. I bind the spirit of witchcraft. You witch, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus Christ and I cancel your plans. I cancel your works. I cancel your chance and I blind you in the name of Jesus Christ now. Glory be to God. As long as the spirit of fear is in control of your life, you will never ever fulfill purpose. You will never ever walk in destiny. You will always be bound until that spirit of fear is cast out of you. Anytime there is bondage in your life to a spirit, 
It simply means that that spirit is in control, not just of your emotions, not just of your life, but it's in control of your purpose and your destiny. As long as there is a spirit in your life that is controlling you, you will never ever be completely controlled by the spirit of God. There will always be diversions in your life. There will always be stoppages in your life. That's why it's so important to walk in deliverance. So vitally important to walk in deliverance. Let me say something to you. And I say this without fear. And I say this without question. And I say this most certainly without any interest of rebuttal. There are children of God. There are children of God that are walking around that are bound by demonic spirits. And you will never be fruitful and successful in your life until you are delivered from those demonic spirits. Lord Jesus, this is going to get good. Like the old people say, this is going to get gooder and gooder. You got to share this right now. You got to share it right now. Glory be to Jesus. My God Almighty. Now that might be strange because some of you may never have heard that before. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. But I say to you most certainly, as a deliverance minister, as a minister of the Lord, as a general in the Lord's army, glory be to God, that most certainly the enemy can not only use an individual, but demonic spirits most certainly can oppress and indwell an individual, even though they are saved. That's the reason why you going around in circles. You saved, you know. You saved, but you got a big, big problem. Even though you saved, you got a big problem with pornography. My God Almighty. And every time, glory be to God, you get into an act of pornography. You are so sorry. You are sincerely sorry. And you ask for forgiveness and you cry. And you say, Lord, I didn't mean to do it. Lord Jesus, please, I need help. You saved, but you're bound. By a spirit of pornography. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Share this. Share this. A lot of the church ain't going to hear this. But share it. Glory be to God. And so therefore there are many people. In the body of Christ. Now I ain't talking about the world. Because once you ain't saved. You full of spirits. All you got in you are demon spirits. So I ain't talking about the world. The world can't be delivered from fear. Or any other spirit until they get saved. Glory be to God. Anytime you're trying to do deliverance on somebody they're not saved, it's called, it ain't called deliverance, it's called exorcism. And Jesus say, whenever you do that, you make that man worse. Why? Because what you drove out of him, they go and look, and they bring more with them that's greater and stronger than them. Why? Because they realize they got to fortify themselves now. And so therefore, they bring those who are stronger than them, and they enter that man again. The Bible says the end of that man is worse than the beginning. So don't be doing exorcism on people who ain't saved. Glory be to God. Get them saved first. Glory be to Jesus. And then do deliverance. It's an act of grace. It's a ministry of deliverance, which is an act of grace. Glory be to God. And plenty of people in the body of Christ need deliverance. Glory be to Jesus. So listen. We're talking about overcoming, exposing, revealing, and overcoming the spirit of fear. Now, the spirit of fear, most certainly, is a very strong spirit in the kingdom of darkness. There are spirits that we call strongholds. The spirit of fear is one of them. Rejection, anger, unforgiveness, strongholds. Why? Because they intertwine. I'm, I'm taking this a little bit from my husband, Apostle Dion Warren Smith. Because they intertwine, and it is so true. They intertwine with your emotions. 
It's almost like, you know, you look at a tree. You ever saw two trees growing together and one begin to grow on the other? Hallelujah. Like vines growing on trees and they begin to intertwine with the tree. Glory be to God. And then so what happens is, is that evil spirits in particular, the spirit of fear, intertwines with your emotions. They become one with your emotions. Glory be to Jesus. And so because they intertwine with your evo emotions, they are able to control your life. Because most of our existence, a great part of our existence, glory be to God, is most certainly the capacity to have emotions, to be emotional. Uh-huh. And so therefore the enemy knows that. And so what he will do for there to be a fortified place in your life, a stronghold, he will allow spirits or send spirits to be intertwined with your emotions. And so spirits will come or, or, or injuries will happen to your soul. Glory be to God, to your emotions. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so therefore a child will be molested. My God Almighty. And so that molestation... Glory be to God, causes unforgiveness, causes fear, causes rejection. The molestation is the open door. My God Almighty, causes other spirits to come in. Anger, my God Almighty. And so therefore, fear is a major spirit. Now let me tell you why I'm dealing with fear first. I'm dealing with fear first, glory be to God, to start this whole journey on spiritual warfare. I'm dealing with fear first simply because I was bound by the spirit of fear. And I'll tell you how the spirit of fear came in. Glory be to Jesus. The spirit of fear came in because as a child, glory be to God, I suffered rejection. Lord Jesus, almighty God. And, and so therefore, I always have had a problem with my self-esteem, my self-worth, self my self-appreciation. And so I always felt fearful. I always felt that I was not good enough. Now people may look at me and say, what? You, Providence? Really? <laughs> I always felt that I was not good enough. I didn't measure up. I didn't look like the rest of them. I didn't fit in with the rest of them. I wasn't loved like the rest of them. My God Almighty. And so I had to literally go through deliverance. Can I tell you that when I went through deliverance from the spirit of fear, I was saved, I was prophesying, and I was preaching. But I was bound with the spirit of fear. Lord Jesus and the Holy Ghost, share this video. Share it. Glory be to God. Why? Because the enemy knew that I would never walk totally in purpose. Because the spirit of fear... Hallelujah, would have stopped me from progressing. Why? Because every time I tried to progress, I would become afraid, thinking that I would not be accepted, thinking that I would not be loved, thinking that I would not be appreciated, thinking that I was not good enough. And so I say to you again, the spirit of fear will stop you from fulfilling purpose and walking in destiny. This is the plan of the enemy. Satan is not so concerned that you will go to heaven because he realizes that people will go to heaven. He realizes that he cannot stop that. The enemy knows that he cannot stop people from going to heaven. What he realizes that he can do though is that he can block your progression, block your power, glory be to God, and block your purpose where you don't take anybody else with you, that nobody else will get into heaven because of you. So you'll never lead somebody to Christ. You'll never impact another person's life. You'll never be used of God greatly walking in your destiny. Why? Because of various spirits that have you bound. So I'm talking about the spirit of fear simply because I had to have the spirit of fear to live up or cast out of me. I literally had to go through deliverance and have the spirit of fear cast out of me. And what made it even worse in my fearful state, glory be to God, as a young child, hallelujah, I would watch horror movies. Glory be to Jesus. I never forget it. 
I'll never forget when Poltergeist came out. And I was watching the movie Poltergeist. And can I tell you, glory be to Jesus, as I was watching that movie late one night in the dark all by myself, I felt when a spirit came upon me. I felt when a spirit entered me. I'm not asking you anything, I'm telling you. And so therefore, glory be to God, I struggled with the spirit of fear even though I was saved. My God Almighty, I struggled with praying. I tell you, I was bound by the spirit of fear. I could not pray in a room that was dark. I had to have the light on. I could not sleep in a dark room. I had to have the light on. My God Almighty, if you ask me to say something, I would become frozen with fear because I would feel that people would laugh at me. I would feel that people would reject me. I would feel that people would not receive me. I would feel that what I have to say would sound stupid. I was intimidated, my God Almighty, by the enemy through the spirit of fear. So the Lord had to deliver me. The spirit of fear, glory be to God, causes unpleasant emotions. It is a very unpleasant emotion. And it causes you to feel a threat of danger or a pain of harm. Now I know the acronym used for fear was coined where it says false evidence appearing real. F for fear meaning false, E meaning evidence, A meaning appearing, and R meaning real. That's true. That is true. Because the enemy will concoct a lie, glory be to God, and he will cause your imaginations to accept it. And your imaginations will accept it, and your body, my God, your mind will believe it, and your body will respond to it. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. I said what the enemy will do, because it is false evidence appearing real. That's right. So what the enemy will do is concoct a lie. My God. And he will cause your imaginations. That's why the word of God says we are to cast down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? The word of God. And so the enemy will cause your imaginations. To be overactive. Glory be to God. He will give you grandeur delusions. Where you believe a lie. Glory be to God. You will believe that something exists that doesn't. My God Almighty. And so your imaginations. Hallelujah. Will persuade your mind. My God Almighty. To believe a thing. And your mind will believe it. Your soulish realm. Will become impacted. By this lie that the enemy has concocted. And therefore your soulish realm, glory be to God, will lead your body to respond to it. Your mind, your will, and your emotions will control and determine and dictate the response of your body. So just to bring it all home, because you believe that there's a ghost in your closet, the minute you hear a noise in your room, like it be saying in the Bahamas, you break off running. <laughs> glory be to Jesus but it's the enemy's plan to sell you a lie so fear really glory be to God in its very simplest sense fear most certainly is the ability to cause you to respond my God almighty inwardly and outwardly to a lie from the enemy and listen, even if the situation is real to a certain degree, the enemy will blow it up and cause it to appear to be more than what it really is. And so, when you really look at something and you say, why was I afraid of that anyhow? Why was I bothered with that in the first place? When knowledge comes to you and you receive information and revelation, and deliverance and you realize that listen it was a waste of time for me to be afraid why was I afraid in the first place and so you realize what really looked like a mountain that the enemy made to look like a mountain was really a molehill that's what fear does and it brings with it anxiety 
And listen, in this time that we're going through now, this time of the worldwide pandemic, this time of global recession, this time it seems of worldwide panic, pandemonium and fear, the enemy would want to sell you another lie. And that lie is that you believe that God is not able. That you believe that God will not do for you what his word says that he will do. The lie the enemy sells you is that you fear what's going on around you and that what, go, what is going on around you will overshadow, glory be to God, who lives on the inside of you, meaning Holy Spirit. So therefore fear will bring anxiety, a feeling of uneasiness. It will bring worry, my God Almighty. It will bring timidity, Jesus, tension, oh God Almighty. And if you fear for long enough, after a while you begin to lose hope, my God Almighty, deliverance does not come. You begin to lose hope because of the fear. And when you begin to lose hope, glory be to God, it walks in or walks in the spirit of depression, the spirit of suicide, the spirit where you feel, glory be to God, that it's not even worth you proceeding any further. Throw in the towel. Throw your hands up. Give up. Take your life. It's better to be dead than to be alive. My God Almighty, again a lie from the enemy, perpetrated by fear. Because the minute you take your life, you have just entered, my God, the underworld, my God, where the word says that the worms die not. Listen, I don't care what the Jehovah Witness says. The worms die not, and the flames are not quenched. And you will live eternally in death and darkness. My God Almighty. So you don't, you're not getting a way out by taking your life. Like we say in the Bahamas or in the Caribbean, you're really jumping from the pot into the fire. And so fear is a very dangerous emotion. Fear is a very dominant spirit. Fear is one of the chief spirits of the underworld. Fear is the faith of the kingdom of darkness. Fear is the reverse of faith. Faith is the chief spirit in the kingdom of light. Fear is the imitation and reversal of faith in the kingdom of darkness. So in the kingdom of God and of his Christ, there is faith. In the kingdom of darkness, which is controlled by Satan, there is fear. Glory be to God. And so therefore, Father admonishes us not to be afraid. I'm going to go into the scriptures in a little bit. There are scriptures mentioned in the word. Fear, do not fear. It's mentioned in the word enough to cover every day of the year. 365 times. Do not fear. It is a command. Hallelujah. It is not a suggestion. It is a command. My God Almighty. And so that's why I say to you, for those of you that are saved, my God Almighty, that the spirit of fear must be cast out in order for you to live a productive life and walk and fulfill purpose. Fear will cripple you. Fear will from walking in destiny. Fear will minimize you. In other words, you will never accomplish totally what you were called to do. Fear will cause you to think that you are the least, that you are the worst, that you are the lowest. My God Almighty, when Aaron and Joshua, sorry, and Caleb and the rest of the 12 spies went into Canaan, my God Almighty, even though they saw the fertility of Canaan, where the grapes were so huge that at least two to three men had to carry it. Even though they saw the fertility of the land they were given, even though they knew the God who made the promise that I would give you this land, but I want you to see it first. Even though they went, my God, with the backing of the kingdom of heaven, they did not see, my God, the promise. All they saw were the giants in the land. 
and they came back with a bad report. We cannot possess the land because there are giants in the land. The enemy sold them a lie through the spirit of fear and caused them to forget who sent them and to look at what they saw rather than believe what they heard. My God Almighty, fear will stop you from believing the unadulterated word of God. It will cause you to function in your human senses. It will cause you to forget the ways of the spirit. You will function in that which you can see, hear, taste, feel, and touch. And you will forget what God says. Why? Because the spirit of fear is in control. My God Almighty, I was preaching the word. Glory be to God. Singing under the anointing. People being saved and baptized. Filled with the Holy Ghost in my ministry. My God Almighty. But yet I was afraid to sleep in the dark. I had to sleep with the light on in my room. My God Almighty. People being slain in the Holy Ghost. While I preached and prophesied. But yet when I got home, my God, I struggled with myself. Did they accept me? Was I good enough? Did they believe me? Could I have done it better? My God Almighty, the spirit of fear had me bound. You better hear me. Glory be to Jesus. Because there are many of you that are watching me, that are listening to me. You are going through the same thing. And that's the reason why you cannot progress in your prayer life. You cannot progress in your word life. You cannot progress in your life of purpose. You cannot progress in the things of God. You're not walking in your destiny. Why? Because you're operating in and controlled by the spirit of fear. Lord Jesus, the spirit of fear will cause you to doubt the word of God. Now see, doubt and unbelief that's another set of spirits. And they walk together with the spirit of fear. See, there's spirits, when you do deliverance, you'll realize that spirits group together, they walk in packs. They're like dogs. So not because you had three million demon spirits mean that they're all together. They walk in packs. They're separated. Because they're called and they are there to do different things. Glory be to God. So they're groupings of spirits. They're families of spirits. My God Almighty. And matter of fact, can I tell you in doing deliverance? Sometimes they don't like one another. They talk on each other. They fuss and fight. <laughs> and they'll reveal or talk on, the, on another spirit to hide them. So when we're doing deliverance and we ask who all is there with you, and one spirit would say, oh, greed is here. And then greed would say, no, don't call my name, this one here. And they'll start talking, talking to one another, ratting, ratting on one another. Deliverance is so interesting, it makes me laugh. It's a work of grace. It's a ministry of deliverance. And listen, every child of God, every child of God that's walking in the spirit of God, that have been delivered themselves. You are called to operate in the ministry and the grace of deliverance. Somebody came to my ministry. And to be honest with you, she's here today. You know why I didn't send her back? Because, and I'll be very honest, and I don't care if I get flack for it. That's just all right. <laughs> I always say, as I always do, don't come for me. Don't come for the prophetess. She came to this ministry. She came looking for help. And as I always do, where is your church? Who is your pastor? And after I was informed, big church here in the Bahamas, right here in the Bahamas, big church. And she said, prophetess, my pastor doesn't do deliverance. And I said, why not? And she said, my pastor said that is not his expertise. And so my pastor said, I must seek out a pastor that does deliverance.
I stopped so you could think about that. I've never seen in the word of God that Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says only certain people can do this. I've never seen Jesus say even to his disciples now only y'all can do this. The rest of the people that are following me, they're not as powerful as you. They can't do it. When Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions, take authority over serpents, nothing shall by any means harm you, to cast out demons, to heal the sick. I know y'all ain't want to hear this. You know, the religious church don't want to hear this. Jesus was not talking to a select few. Jesus was talking to his body. The body of Christ. So she said to me, my pastor said he doesn't do that because he doesn't really know how to do it. That's not his area of expertise. Well, my question to that pastor is, what is your area of expertise? So I said to her, the only way that we will deal with you in this ministry, glory be to Jesus, is that you must stay in this house. Because obviously if your pastor does not know how to bring his sheep into deliverance, and you are a sheep in the house in need of deliverance, then you are obviously in the wrong house. You're under the wrong shepherd. To this day, she's a part of our ministry. I never sent her back. And trust me, I'm not going to send not a one of them back. If they ever come to this house, to Providence Patrice Smith and Apostle Dion Smith for deliverance, hear me and hear me good, they're going to stay in this house. Matter of fact, that's really where they stay. Because most of the time they say, Providence, we ain't going back. I ain't going back. Glory be to Jesus. It is an indictment on a church, on a shepherd, on a pastor to send a sheep that God has placed under your care to send that sheep into another pasture under another shepherd that you yourself ain't sure about. You don't know if you send in your sheep under a wolf that has sheep clothing. The work of deliverance is a work of grace. And every born again child of God that's walking in the spirit and is delivered themselves have the ability to walk in that ministry and in that grace. Jesus has given it to the church. So there are many people that are sitting in congregations and they're bound. And they're struggling. And what happens is eventually the enemy pulls them out of church. Because you can only struggle for so long. And religion will only help you for so long. And so that's why there are many people in church that are sitting in congregations. And you ask them, are you saved? And they will tell you, yes, I'm saved. But they're not really saved. They're in a backslidden condition. They're in a lukewarm condition. And they are bound by demon spirits. Jesus said, I would prefer that you be hot or cold. Because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew out of my mouth. So the spirit of fear and any other spirit, the intention is to pull you into a lukewarm position. See, the enemy is an age-old adversary. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is a master strategist. You better not take Satan for granted and you better not think that outside of God that you're stronger than him. We are only stronger than the enemy because Jesus Christ by his spirit lives on the inside of us. And so most certainly the enemy, like I said, is a master strategist. 
We can only, glory be to God, overcome him and defeat him through the knowledge of the word of God. That's why you got to know this. You got to be in this. You got to be living this. You got to be walking in this. You got to understand this. You got to love this. You got to live by this. That's the only way that you will overcome. In manifestation. Glory be to Jesus. And so, Isaiah, or first, Second Timothy first, Second Timothy chapter 1. And I want you to turn to these scriptures with me, because I want you to read it with me. Glory be to God. Second Timothy, I told you we're going to be teaching the whole month of July, August, and September. The months, July, August, and September, we're going to be dealing with spiritual warfare. Revealing, exposing, and uncovering spirits that have people bound. So 2 Timothy chapter 1. And it says here, verse 7, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And it says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Which means then the spirit of fear had to come from another entity. If God didn't give it to us, Yahweh didn't give it to us, then obviously it came from Satan. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. But this is what he gave to us. But, there's that conjunction, of power and of love. It tells me that love and power are spirits as well. And of a sound mind. That's also a spirit. Sound is a mind. Now look at it. When I thought about this the other day. I said the minute you operate in fear. The minute the spirit of fear comes in and takes control of your life. The first thing it does is borders your mind. It destabilizes the mind. Look at that. What Satan does. Is a direct opposition of what God does. Satan comes, glory be to God, to reverse what happens in the kingdom of God. So in the kingdom of God, we have sound mind. In the kingdom of darkness, there's a destabilization of the mind. So there are many people that have had nervous breakdown. And it's not physiological. It's not psychological. It's not psychiatrical. It's not medical. It's spiritual. A spirit has come in and has destabilized the mind. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, but these are the spirits that he gave us. He gave us the spirit of power. Remember I just said that in Luke chapter 10, Behold, I give unto you power. So God has given us power, he's given us love, and he's given us a sound mind. Glory be to God. He's given us a strong mind. He's given us right thinking. My God Almighty, he's given us a healthy mind. That is what God has given to us. Not the spirit of fear. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And then look at this, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Turn there with me. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures. Isaiah, Isaiah is one of my favorite books. Matter of fact, when the Lord first began to use me and really set me forth in ministry, he gave me Isaiah chapter 6. Who shall go for me? So Isaiah is one of my favorite books. I love it. I read it all the time. One of the most powerful New Te Old Testament or Old Covenant prophets, Isaiah. So Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Look at this. My God. All right. Well, let's start at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 8, and we'll go to verse 10. Verse 8 says, 
But thou, Israel, art my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen. So that's one and the same person. Different levels of the same person. Jacob is the humanity of Israel. Israel is the spiritual Jacob. Israel is the transformed Jacob. Israel is the delivered Jacob. Israel is the Jacob that is walking in the manifested covenant. So that's why you notice whenever God speaks, he would say, my servant Jacob, my chosen Israel. Or my chosen Jacob, my servant Israel. Israel. You would always see those used interchangeably. So verse 8 it says, But thou, Israel, art my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Which means then God is talking to us. He's talking to the church, the body of Christ, the remnant. He says, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. I now call you friends. And so we see it in the Old Testament. Jesus was just reverberating it in the New Testament. Father said to Jacob and to Israel, I am calling you friends. Look at this. Verse 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Now look at verse 10. Let's contextualize it. He's talking to who he started out talking to in verse 8. He said, Israel, spiritual Jacob, Jacob, human Israel. He's talking to his servant Israel. Hear what he says to him. Hear what he says to us. It's the same thing. Verse 10, he says, Fear thou not. Fear thou not. So the minute you begin to live in fear, hear me, you are walking in disobedience to the word of God. That's the reason why deliverance must take place. Oh God, I feel you right now, Holy Ghost. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, confused, worry not, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness, in other words, my power. So he's saying unto his chosen, fear thou not, do not fear. Why? I am your God. Hear me. A man that is walking in fear is not made perfect in God. You are not yet matured in the things of God. A man that is walking in fear have yet to experience the levels, the dimensions, and the realms of God. A man, and of course you know I mean man as a male and female. A man that is walking in fear has yet to have a deep and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Fear thou not. For I am your God. Don't worry. Don't be dismayed. I am with thee. And then look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Jesus. Thank you sweet Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 10. And this is so important during this time. Of COVID-19, coronavirus, worldwide pandemic. This is so important during this time. 
when there are massive layoffs all around the world and here this black prophet from the Bahamas there's about to be more COVID-19 is not the worst there's more that's even more devastating that's coming you better hear me you better make sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock that rock which is Jesus Christ you better make sure that you have a relationship with him because before it gets better it's going to become extremely worse so therefore you got to hold on you got to know that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ glory be to God so during this time of much fear, much worry, much anxiety, much confusion, look to the Word of God. Word of God tells us, and again I'm talking to the church, because God does not speak to the unsaved. The only prayer that Father hears from an unsaved man is that of repentance. So I'm talking to the church. Glory be to Jesus. Matthew chapter 10, verse 29. To 31. Glory be to Jesus. And it says here. Well let's go up to 28. Let's go up to 28. And we'll, we'll, we'll go to 31. So verse 28. But the main verse is verse 29. Verse 28. It says. And fear not. Them which kill the body. But are not able to kill the soul. In other words, the spirit of death can come and take your body. But it can't touch your soul. It can't touch your spirit. Why? Your soul, your spirit belongs to God. Your spirit in particular belongs to God. And he breathed into man the breath of life. The spirit of God, the pneuma of God was breathed into man and man became a living soul. So Jesus is saying, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And listen, there's a literal hell. Again, I say, I don't care what the Jehovah Witness says. This is a literal hell. Glory be to God. Hades, not Gehenna. Not Sheol, Hades. Not the grave, not a burning site. Hades, hell. Glory be to God. There is heaven, there is hell. My God Almighty. Was it John Lennon? Is it John Lennon who says, imagine there's no heaven? Well, you know, you should waste your time imagining it. There is a heaven and there is a hell. So fear him, which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Look at this, verse 29. And not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father knowing. Look at verse 30. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered so you're going to tell me that a God who is able to number every strand of hair and that's whether you got plenty or whether you got little and some people it ain't take too much to count their hair they just got some sprigs just a little bit but some people got plenty but father knows every strand of hair he knows it by number how then can you believe that the same God is not able to take care of you? Fear ye not. Ye are more valuable than many sparrows. My God Almighty. So Jesus is saying to us, Father is saying to us, because he is aware of everything that happens on the earth. And in the life of every believer, there's nothing that happens in your life that he does not allow. 
Satan cannot do in your life as he pleases. Even in the midst of your disobedience. As a child of God. Glory be to God. The enemy cannot do in your life as he pleases. So father says fear not. Why? I got you covered. Fear not. Why? I am providing for you. I have provided for you. Fear not. Why? I have you protected. Fear not. I have already given prosperity unto you. Fear not. I've given you power. Fear not. I've given you an awesome purpose. Fear not. I am your God. Glory be to Jesus. And so Father admonishes us. Hallelujah. To walk in faith and not fear. To walk in faith, faith, I'm sorry, and not doubt. To walk in faith and not unbelief. And like I said, fear, doubt, and unbelief go together. They're those demons that run in packs. Glory be to God. And of course, doubt and unbelief is different. Hallelujah. Doubt is different from unbelief. Doubt and unbelief is different from fear. Glory be to Jesus. But they are in the same family of demons. And so Jesus said, Do not be dismayed. Do not doubt. Do not operate in unbelief. Do not fear. But trust me. Why? Because the spirit of fear has no power over your life. Unless you give it power. The spirit of fear cannot take control of your life. Unless you give it control. Unless the door has been opened. Either by you or generationally. And so therefore father says to you today. I've given you power over the spirit of fear. I've given you permission to trample the spirit of fear under your feet. I've given you domination over the spirit of fear. As powerful as that spirit is in the kingdom of darkness, that spirit still is subject and subjected to you. Why? Because you have the power of God living on the inside of you. So there's no reason for you to fear. There's no reason for you to be bound by fear. The only way you can be bound by fear if you believe the lie that the enemy sells you. Glory be to Jesus. And yes, of course, even in my generation, I had to repent. Not just have the spirit of fear cast out, but I had to repent because I realized that the spirit of fear was in my generations. My forefathers. I saw it in them. I saw it in my grandparents. Glory be to God. I saw it in my mother. I saw it in my siblings and other family members. So therefore, after I was delivered, glory be to God, I began to pray for the deliverance of others. I began to close the door. I repented, my God, of the sin of fear that brought in the curse. Jesus, Holy Ghost, that caused that spirit to have rights, legal rights. Glory be to God. And to be able to abide, not just in my life, but in my family life. So after I repented, and after I was delivered, he that is strengthened must now go and strengthen his brethren. So after I was delivered, I began to take authority over that spirit of fear in my generation. I began to close the door of fear in my generation. I began to bind the spirit of fear over my family. I began to take authority over the spirit of God and the spirit of fear in my children's life. I commanded the spirit of fear to get out of my household. Get out of my family line. Get out of my generations. Why? Because I was delivered. So therefore I sought to bring deliverance to others. My God Almighty, spirit of fear is a powerful spirit, but it does not have the power to keep you bound. You must have the desire to want to be free. And once you've asked for God to bring freedom into your life, 
Once Father has brought freedom through the ministry of, of deliverance, which is an act of grace, he gives you the power, glory be to God, to bring freedom to others. Hallelujah, Jesus. So therefore, I want, to keep, want you to keep in mind, glory be to God, that the spirit of fear, like I started, I opened with this, the spirit of fear, and I'll close with this, the spirit of fear, as long as it is alive and in control in your life, you will never ever walk in purpose. You will never ever walk in destiny. You will never ever be effective on this earth. So for that reason, you must cast the spirit out. Glory be to Jesus. And so today, that's part one. <laughs> That was a lot, but that's part one. Glory be to Jesus. And you know what I found? Even in my life, the spirit of fear actually will open the door to the spirit of infirmity. Because when the spirit of fear is present, it works with your imaginations. And the first thing, like I said, it will do is destabilize your sound mind. So you will begin to create sicknesses. You will begin to create illnesses, phantom sicknesses, phantom illnesses. Glory be to God. And so when I was controlled by the spirit of fear, I always thought, oh, I'm going to die young. I'm going to die early. I ain't going to be around long. Every couple of minutes, if I had a pain in my body, I said, oh, Lord, that's this. Oh, Lord, that's that. Oh, Lord, my heart failing. Oh, Lord, this happening. The spirit of fear will open the door to the spirit of infirmity. It will open the door, as a matter of fact, to every other spirit. Within your 